Hello all, in this particular tutorial, we will learn how to use the Oracle database data pump in detail. The data pump has got mainly two utilities. One is called EXPDP and IMPDP. You can use data pump in other ways, but we will not cover that. We will only cover the IXPDP and IMPDP. And the backup that we do using data pump is the logical backup. Now, as I mentioned before, this particular tutorial is in detail, which means there are a lot of topics that are covered here. And what are those topics I would like to explain. So before explaining what are the topics, let's understand what is data pump. The Oracle data pump allows us to transfer the data and metadata from one database to another. Now, you don't have to transfer it to another database. If you want to copy the same schema or same table in the same database, that's also possible. So you can duplicate the schema or the table in the same database. So not you, you don't have to use the data pump. If you want to, to only to transfer to another database, you can use a, use the same database to do that as well. Now, Oracle data pump allows us to perform full database refresh a schema level export like such as one schema or more than one schema table level export one or more tables table space level export one or more table spaces only ddl but no data only data but no ddl and whatever these options are shown here one to six we will learn all of these options in this particular tutorial so we are going to look at every option here so this particular tutorial will be in detail now the high level steps for data pump to set up is like you need to create a directory at the os level so you'll create a directory at the os level that particular directory will store the file generated by expdp and that particular directory will store the files required by impdp to import the data so that particular directory is used by xpdp and impdp now this is a physical directory at the os level so this is the actual directory at the os level and then once you create the directory at the os level you'll create a data pump directory in oracle so you'll have to create whatever directory that you have to you have created you have to tell oracle where is that directory so you have to create and data pump directory in oracle so you'll use the make directory command here and you will use the uh, create directory command here once you have done this, then you will use the expdp to export the data. Then you will transfer the dump files to target server and then you will use the impdp to import the data. Now, if you are not, if you are, if your source and target database is on the same server, you don't have to transfer the dump file because the, tar the target database is also on the same server. So you don't have to do this particular step. One of the things that I would like to highlight is like it is not mandatory that the directory should be exactly same so you can create a directory called directory one on source one and in on the target you can create a directory called directory two so you can create any directory and neither the name of that particular directory in the oracle so when you create a directory in the oracle and that's the next command so first you'll do say make directory and you i'll create something like this dvd slash aura data that slash data pump this particular directory and the target directory don't have to be exactly same so you can you can have a directory called directory one on the source and you can have a directory called directory two on the target and even this particular name this is a logical name this name also don't have to be exactly same just for your fyr you, you can use a view called dba directories you can run a query select star from dba directories and that particular view will tell you where is your data pump directory so you can use the dba directories view to check where is your data pump directory now we need to because we will be using the exp expdp on one server and impdp on the another server you need to make sure that you create this particular directory structure on source and target database so you'll have to do this on both of the your machines now <coughs> sorry so now if you want to do the full database export at sysdba and again you can do the full database export without sysdba and we'll come to that at a later point in time but if you want to do full database as sysdba then you will run something like this and here the these are the parameters so what you are telling the i'm doing an export using sysdba full is equal to y so i want to do full is equal to y which means full database directory is equal to this is the directory that we created this is the directory and this directory will actually point to this 
because here you has you can see that we have specified this particular directory and then we will say this is the name of the dump file and this is and all of the choices all of these sections which are in the blue are of your choice so you can change them based on what are your options and these are the parameters for this command these are the parameters so these are physics fix you cannot say directly one or dump file one because these are the parameters you you can change something in blue you cannot change something in orange so remember that now if you look at if you want to ex import that particular data to another database then you will use impdp command if you see the syntax everything remains the same only only the log file i have renamed it to that it is a log file of impdp again this is your choice you can give if you want to give the same name that's fine but again that's not the log file of expdp it's a log file of impdp so give a meaning meaningful name for your log file now that now that we have understood how to do the full database refresh if you want to do a particular schema then you can do for a particular schema so schema is equal to hr so we'll give here instead of full we will give the command is exactly same now remember so if you note here i am changing i'm logging as a normal user called hr slash password and this particular user does not have the dba or sys dba authority it's just a normal account so you can use a normal account to export and import the data impdp and expdp you can use a normal user you don't have to use the sysdba or dba authority and i'll show you to, to you that a normal user can also export the data now the key thing is here is the schema so here what we are saying is like we are going to transfer all the objects within this particular schema so schemas is equal to hr we are going to transfer all of these objects to the same schema in the target level now one thing that you have to understand is like because sysdba was doing this particular activity you don't have to grant the authority at the data pump directory to sysdba because sysdba by default has all the authority on the database but now that hr user is doing you need to make sure that you give the read and write on the directory data pump directory to hr so we need to run this particular command if you don't run this particular command hr password hr user will not be able to write to this particular directory because he don't have the permission to for this directory so you'll have to give this permission on the source uh, database for expdp to work and on the target database for impdp to work so we need to run this command on both uh, databases source as well as target now if you there is a concept called remap schema so what we are going to do is in the remap schema what it does is like if you want to if you have a user called hr or a schema called hr and if you want to transfer the data of that hr to another user called shop let's say you have you have another user called shop then what you can do is like you can use a parameter called remap schema what remap schema does it it allows you to map objects from one schema to another schema so here what we are saying is like when we are going to transfer the data from hr to to the another database whatever objects are within the hr they will be transferred to a user called shop so under this schema shop they will be transferred everything under the hr so this is the exactly same like previous but we are here we are introducing a concept called remap schema the we can also do table level refresh and the parameter now changes to tables so here you can see something very interesting when i'm trying to export i'm saying i want to export two tables called employee comma department so when i when i export this and here again in the schemas etc all of these parameters it is you can see it is s and since it is s which means you can have multiple schemas you can copy you can export the data for multiple schemas provided this user has got the access to that particular schema so that is something that you need to understand if that particular user doesn't then probably you might you want to use sysdba or dba authority now here you can see that the hr we are using we are exporting the data of two users two tables from the same schema however when we are in importing we are only importing of one table it is possible that the export file contains more than data so it is not necessary that whatever is in the export file everything has to be imported the point that i wanted to make here is like 
export dump might contain 10 tables and if you want to load only 5 tables that's possible you have to specify that you are you want whichever tables you want to import you have to specify that particular tables you can list, give the list of those tables so that's also possible now what, what what i'm going to say is like what will happen if there is a table which is already so i want to i want to export the records of employee table from one uh, database to another but what if that particular table exists what if that particular table exists then you have an option called append replace skip and truncate append means whatever records are here if there are two records and if you if you use if you use uh, import again with the two records in the source then two plus two will become four replace means the table will get replaced skip means it will skip that part and this is the default so if the table already exists it will not try to recreate that particular table or use uh, load the data into that particular table and truncate means the current data will be truncated uh, the skip is default remember skip is default so what we will be what we can see here is here we have the option to either add records replace the table skip it or truncate the table so we have all of these options now give me a minute so now that now there is an option to do the refresh at the table space level so what what we have is like we can we can do a refresh at the table space level so what we can do is like if you if you have a particular table space called users and you want to restore the data of that particular table space into another table space that's also possible now here remap table spaces i've also shown you something called remap table spaces so what we are saying here is like from we are going to import the data of all the objects which are there in this particular table space called users into another table space called test so here remap table space allows us to map objects of one table space to another table space so we have an option to actually migrate that data from one table space to another table space using exp dp to an imp dp and again this is optional if you want it to migrate to the same uh, table space you, you you just have to remove this particular clause now the concept i want to also explain you concept of content now what if you don't want to you don't want the data you don't want you only want the structure you want the ddl the definition of tables so you want the data the same structure in a different database however you don't want the data so what are the options so there is a clause called content and in that content you will say metadata only there are other options all means it will data plus metadata which means the data along with the structure of the table data only means only the data will be copied the the definition the tables will not and metadata means only the structure will be copied so that if the table does not exist those tables will be created with without data and we are going to see how the metadata works we are going to see how the metadata works now the if you as i mentioned that you can use you you can use a normal user without a dba authority to do a full export of the database and then you need to if you want to do that there is a authority called exp full database so you need to grant that particular authority to the user and when you you grant this then he will be that particular user here hr user will be able to do the full database export now the hr and i would like to highlight that hr does not have the dba authority hr does not have the sys dba authority however we have granted him the exp full database and with this particular utility the hr user will be able to export the complete data and again using the imp full database the hr user will be able to import the full data database so we have the xp full database and imp full database authority privilege that we can grant to the user and with that the user will be able to do the full database refresh now that is i would like to explain you the concept of pair file what is a pair file is like if you see here 
all of these commands i'm giving all of these parameters these are called parameters for exp dp and i'm giving those parameters in the at the command level line level what you can do is like all of these particular parameters you can put it in a file and then you can actually you can when you run the exp dp you can just say i'm going to run the exp dp with this pad file and what it's going to do is like it's going to read all of this it's going to read this particular parameter file and then it's going to you use whatever parameters are stored in this particular file it's going to use that particular parameter and it's going to ex it's going to execute the exp dp so the pair file you can use the pair file again this is the, your just a name you can give whatever name to the pair file you can give this is just a name whatever name you can give to the pair file and what these are the contents again i would like to highlight that these are the parameters these are the values the parameter should be constant you can't change the name of the parameters whatever parameters you you, you can choose one or more parameters and these are the values and these are of your choice now i also introduced a parameter here called job name so this is an optional parameter by default whenever you run the export and if you don't specify the job name by default oracle will create a job name for you and that particular job name will be used to execute this particular job but if you want to specify a job name of your choice that's possible so you can use the job name and again i have here job name you can use job name in all of these commands so you can specify the job name here as well not necessary that you only when you are using the pair file you can use the job name no you can use the job name even in all of these commands i did not show it to you but just wanted to sh explain that job name parameter can be used and that will when you use this job name and why this job name is important will come to know why it is important will come to know now these are this is the these are the some of the commands to monitor so if if you are exporting a very big database such as 4 tb 1 tb or maybe some gigabytes the export is going to take a long time and if you want to know what export jobs are running you can use the dba data pump jobs utility uh, view or uh, sorry data dictionary view to actually capture the uh, capture the current in progress data pump jobs now there are other ways like you know if you have executed when you execute the data pump and let's say you terminated your session or you closed your session and you want to reconnect to the job you can use the attach is equal to and job name and from where you will get this job name you'll get it from the dba data pump jobs status will allow you to show the job status continue client will allow you to display the log and start the job if the job is idle the continue client does two activity it also start the job stop job will shut down the job it will not kill the job it will shut down the st job start job will start or resume current job and kill job will delete the job now i would like to also explain the concept of master table so while the while the data pump is executing there will be a default master table with the same name or as the job name that will create in the scheme schema this particular table will contain the progress of your data pump you can use this particular table to actually view the progress of your and now remember one thing this particular table gets auto deleted or auto dropped when the the data pump export or exp dp or imp dp job completes then the master table is dropped if you want to keep the table even after the job is completed you can say keep master is equal to yes whenever you are executing this data pump you can put a parameter here keep master is equal to yes and the master table will not be dropped now if job terminates unexpectedly then master table is retained and if you don't want it you can just delete that you can delete the master table if you no longer need it stop job if if you stop the if you stop the job here using this particular utility or the command then the master table is retained because you need to restart the job but if you kill the job master table is dropped so these are these are this is the concept of master table now that we have seen all of this it's time to do actual exercise so i got here what i'm going to do now is like i'm going to i got two databases here one for the source and one for the target i'm going to close this so one for the source and one for the target i'm going to show you what are how my database names looks like i'm going to copy here as well so this is the source the source is on db1 and the name of the database is aura19d i'm going to put it here 
and the target is i'm going to run this here and the target is on the db2 so this is the target so remember that i'm going to use i'm going to whenever i'm going to run the expdp i'm going to run it here and whenever i'm going to run the impdp i'm going to run it here and because these are two different machines these are the two different machines i'm going to transfer the files from first machine to the second machine every time i do the expdp so whenever i have to do the expdp i will be transferring those files to this particular server so this is an extra step now again for the practice you can set up your source and target on the same server you don't need two servers you can have two databases on the same server and again i would like to mention that you can ex import the data into the same database you don't have to import in another so but we got two and these are both the linux databases they are hosted on linux machine now that we have understood this concept let's let's go ahead and uh, set up some tables so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create some tables and i'm going to show it to you all of that so <clears throat> and i'm going to grant this particular permissions also so, we, so <clears throat> let's let's run all of this and i'm going to show it to you so i'm going to create two users one is called hr user one is called shop user then i'm going to grant the create session then i'm going to create some tables into hr some tables into shop so let's do that so first thing is i'm going to create a user called hr with the password of password shop with a password create session create table then into the hr i'm going to create a table called employee i'm going to also create a table called department then i'm going to insert some records into employee so i will have two employees in my organization rock and water and i will have two departments in my organization it department and admin now i also have a shop and in that shop i have item id item name so i've got fruits of quantity 10 so the i got I, at the end of the day when i run this i will have an hr employee and i can run this and I, you will see that i don't have these tables you can see this and i don't want to run all of this but let's let's say you can see all of this is not there now what i'm going to do is i'm going to just take this so let's say create user let's run it up to here that's done and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to create these tables insert some data etc i'm going to do up to here so let's do all of that everything looks good so you can see everything looks good no errors so i'm going to close this once again and now i'm going to run this queries and you should be able to see that i've got two employees one is called rock and water i got two departments it and admin and i got and shop where i have got 10 fruits in my shop so this is the setup now the, another thing that i want to do explain and i can do this at a later point in time that we are going to use some of the some of the import or export we are going to do by a hr user some by a shop user so these users needs to have the permission to execute that particular but that we will do at a later point in time because the first thing that i wanted to show you that sysdba don't so now that we have set up the environment now that we have set up the environment and on the target so let me let me show it to you on the target <clears throat> i don't have this particular tables neither and i'm, I'm going to sh run one more query i'm going to pause for a one minute and i'm going to sh run this particular query this particular query queries dba users to find out if i have got any user called hr and shop this is this run, i'm going to run it on the target so db2 but here on the source i got this users called hr and shop so i got this users on the source with three tables these are the three tables on the target i don't have these users and since i don't have these users probably these tables will also not exist now first thing that we are going to do is we are going to understand we are going to first we are going to set up the data pump directory for us so let's connect to the source let's connect to the target and i'm going to let me see if i can do this side by side yes i can do it that looks good what i'm going to do now is on the on the source i'm going to create a directory and also on the target i'm going to create the directory so let's do that and actually what happened is it got flipped so let me close this one more time let's see if i can reopen and align it properly it's flipping actually it's this is the target so let's do some yeah so this is the source this so this is the source 
and this is the target and the, you can see there are two ways to identify the white color db1 blue color db2 so you can from this you can find out which is source and which is target i'm going to close this this is not a valid command it's going to fail if i run the enter i'm going to clear the screen now what we are going to do is we are going to run a, we are going to create a data pump directory on the source and i'm going to create a direct data pump directory on the target that's done then i'm going to set the environmental variable so here i'll be connecting to aura 19d and i'm going to connect s equal plus sdba and here i'm going to connect to aura 19a and then i'm going to connect s equal plus sdba now then what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the create directory command and here i'm going to create the directory as well now i'm going to go to i'm going to go to the and you can run this you can run this from you can run it from here so you can okay so it will give me a lot of output let's not run it here let's run it in the sql plus developer so i'm going to run this on the target so this is the target that this is this target so i'm going to run it here you can see now we have got a data pump directory and i'm going to run it on the source and we will be having a data pump directory now this directory is just created we have not granted any authority to any user but i just wanted to make a point that we the sysdba is going to do the first so we are going to use the uh we are going to use the sysdba authority to do the full ex export and since sysdba has every authority on the database we don't have to grant him any authority so now exit from the database here exit from the database here and what we will be doing is like we will be most of our activity will be in this particular environment so i'm going to stay in the location and now under this there will be this is the brand new directory so you can see it has got zero files and here also zero files so now let me clear the screen and let me clear the screen now what we are going to do is first thing that we want we want to do is so we have done all of this so we are going to use the expdp utility to do the full database export so let's do that so i'm going to use this particular utility it's the same thing whatever is in the ppt xpdp full directory name of the directory dump file name of the dump file log file and same command for impdp and you can see if you want to cross verify that command you can exactly see that whatever was there in that ppt exactly same so now what will happen is like i'll have to enter the password and the password of sysdba so i'm entering the password of sysdba it's going to connect to the source database and it's going to <coughs> sorry it's going to generate this expdp export dump with the name of the it's full db underscore dump and it's also going to create a log file and i don't want to i don't want to you know so while i don't want to close this particular screen because the export will get paused or no it won't get paused actually so if i say control c it will run in the background but let's let's not do that because that's for the next session so not next session it is it is going to come as a in this particular tutorial on how to monitor the status etc etc so give it a minute since that since this is the full database export the full database export might take some time so give it a minute so it's you can see that it is it is exported this three tables it has exported a lot of the object but it has exported hr.department hr.employee and shop.inventory and here you can see this is the name of the dump file that is generated exactly the same name that we gave here and if i now do let me clear the screen and if i do ls minus l you should be able to see this is the actual dump file this is the log file we don't have to transfer the log file we just have to transfer the we just have to transfer the dump file so here you can see that it is empty so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the scp utility to transfer the full dump so i'm going to transfer this on the second host let's do that that's done now if i check here you can see the full db dump has appeared we have transferred that file from the db1 to db2 now on the so on this we have we are going to import the data and before importing just before importing i'm going to verify i'm going to just verify and you can see that there is no user called hr and shop and there is no employee 
table neither there is a department table neither there is an inventory table so all of this is not there now we are going to use the imp dp utility and exactly same whatever we use the exp dp exactly same and, and you are going to see it on the screen so i'm going to run this particular utility and when i enter the password of sysdba it's going to connect to the uh, connect to the target database and it's going to import whatever is in that particular dump file is going to import into our target database so that's what is right now happening now again the import will take some time based on how big is your dump and how big is your database so let me just let just, we are going to just watch it so as you can see it is it is it is importing all of these objects and Let's see, and you can see here it has imported this HR department, HR employee, and shop inventory. So now let's go, and here you can see there was a message table of view does not exist. But before running that, let's see if the users are created. And you can see we got two users called HR and shop. So the users got created. Let's see the records of employee table. We should have two records, two employees in our organization. So that looks good. Now again, I would like to prove that we are on the target. DB2 and we have got the department table, we have got the employee table, and we got the shop table. So both of these schemas, along with the objects within that schema, were refreshed. So this is the concept of full database refresh. Now, what we are going to do now is we are going to learn the next concept is schema level refresh. Now, what instead of running that there are two concepts here, one is schema level refresh. So here I'm transferring the HR to HR and then here I'm transferring the HR to shop. Now, instead of doing this twice, I would like to skip this particular part and I just explain you the schema remap option because this is exactly the same. So here I'll take export of HR and load into HR and here I'm saying and again, you can use this. But what I wanted to do is like I don't want to waste a lot of your time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the copy of hr but when i load it i'm going to load it as shop so i'm going to i'm going to show you this particular demo so now before doing that and remember the user who is doing this schema level refresh is the export is done by hr and the import is done by the shop user so these are the two different users so shop user is going to load whatever is in the schema hr is going to load it here so we are going to so what we need to do is we need to grant the read and write directory to HR and we need to give it to the shop user. But for safety, what I'll do is like, you know, not to complicate, I'm going to give the authority on both of the databases to both of the users. So let's not, it makes my life easier. So I'm going to do that here. So I'm going to give the read directory and write directory to both of the users here. That's done. I'm going to do this on the target database as well. That's done. Now, what we are going to do for safety, we, 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 can, we, can, we can keep these dump files because the name, the dump file that I'm going to use to do this exercise is actually a different dump file name. But for just for, for safety, uh, that's fine. We can keep that. Okay. So what we, what I, I thought of deleting it, but that's fine. So otherwise you will think that you, we have to delete that particular file, but I don't, they, those files are, Different dump files, these are the different dump files. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the expdp. Now I'm not using the sysdba. So let me clear this particular screen. And I'm going to say expdp hr password. So I'm going to connect using hr. I'm going to say only this particular schema and under this particular directory and the dump file name is hr schema dot dump and the this is the schema export again these are your parameters you can give whatever name you want to give so i'm going to run this particular query and then it's going to connect to hr schema and it's going to only export the objects which are within the hr schema that's what is going to happen right now now what we are going to do is when we actually import this particular data and before doing that so the dump file is export exported so now what we need to do is we need to transfer this to this target so scp the hr schema dump and we need to transfer it to the target so let's do that that's done let's verify that that particular file came here and you can see we got hr schema dot dump so this is the dump file 
um, and let me show you the size here and you can see it is it is basically 348160 and 348160 so this is the dump file and what we are going to do now is we are going to import that particular dump into the we are going to import that particular dump into the into the target table but when we are importing and now before doing that let me show you to something so we what we are doing is like we are going to load the employee and department under the shop so before running this i'm going to show you something so i'm going to see if there is a table called shop dot employee and is there a table called shop dot department i'm going to show it to you and we don't have this particular tables we don't have this table and we don't have this table because this table actually these tables are there under the hr schema so you can see these tables are there in the hr schema and we have got the department under the hr schema but there is no shop dot employee neither there is a shop dot department now the since i'm using the schema remap what will happen whatever objects were there in hr they will get loaded into the shop so when this export com import completes when this import completes this import completes the remap will happen and in that particular remap whatever is in the hr user will get remapped to the shop user and that means that these two tables will be still be there but there will be two new tables that get created one is employee one is department under the shop so now shop will have three tables let's see how it works so now the export is completed now it's time to do the import so let's run this import and you can see it has imported shop.department shop.employee let's run this here and you can see now we have got the hr.employee which was the original table and shop.employee which is the copy from the hr schema into this shop schema and the shop.inventory will still remain because that is the original table so we now what we did here is like we copied the objects of hr schema into another schema and while we do that we use the keyword called remap schema so this is the schema level refresh now this is again optional if you if you wanted to load the hr into hr that's also possible if uh, but i just wanted to i didn't wanted to show you too many examples now the table level refresh what we are going to do now here is like we are going to just refresh this particular table called employee the dump file will contain two tables however when we load we will only load one table so that's possible now before doing that i need to drop that particular table so let's <clears throat> let's go ahead and drop the table from actually we will drop both of the tables from target so let's do that and so we have dropped both of the tables and what we are going to do is we are going to go to the source and we are going to generate a new dump file so let's and when we generate the new dump file we will use the parameter called we are going to say only the tables so we are going to generate the table so it will export employee and department and you can see the dump file contains hr.department hr.employee so these are the two tables that are exported using the expdp and then i'm going to go to the import i'm going to before importing i need to transfer that particular file so let's transfer that using the using the scp utility so i'm going to clear this i'm going to transfer the table dump dot dump and here you should be able to see we got the table dot dump so this particular file we got and what we are going to do is like export had two tables but when we are going to import we are going to import only one table called employee so and you can see i just dropped those tables so those tables were dropped now if i run shop dot hr dot employee i should have that here but hr dot department will not be there so you can see hr dot department is not there at all now because when we loaded and you can see here it only imported hr dot employee it did not actually load the hr dot shop and the reason of that is very simple and because when i did the import i used the only tables is equal to employee so it is possible that dump file contains more data and you don't want to load entire data that is also possible the next part is what if the table already exists now what i'm going to do is i'm you, you can see here we just loaded the employee data and i'm not going to again generate a dump file 
because the dump file already contains the employee. So I'm going to use the same dump file. I'm going to use the same dump file. But here, what we are going to do is we are going to use an option called table exist. So we are going to use the option and I'm going to say append. What append means is like whatever records are already there will be kept and the new records from the dump file will be added. So it will add. So now how many how many records are there in hr.employee? There are two and the dump file contains another two records. So when I import this using IMPDP, but when I say, <coughs> sorry, table exist action is equal to append. When I say this, then what will happen? This will become two plus two is equal to four. I'm going to show it to you. So let's run the IMP DP once again. And let's run it once again. So I'm going to run it once again. And this time here, you can see I said table exist action is equal to append. Table exist action is equal to append. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run select star from employee. And this time you can see there are four records. And why the four records came? Because I said append, which means now if I would have said replace, and I'm going to do that actually, I, that was not a plan. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to say option replace. And let's see what exactly happens. So now I'm going to say replace on the target. So I'm going to do the replace. And this time, let's see what exactly happens. And let's run the query. And you can see back to two, because what it did, the dump file only contained two records when we export it on the source. It only contains two records. So the dump file contains two records. When I said replace, what it did, it dropped it and recreated it with, with, the, uh, with the same records from the dump file. Now that we have understood the table action, action. And remember, the skip is default. If you don't specify this particular parameter, it is going to skip it. And I can show it to you. So I'm going to clear this and I'm going to run the IMPDP once again. Sorry, I use the skip option. I should have not used the skip option. So I'm going to... <coughs> I'm going to uh, what was the yeah replace I'm not going to say replace I'm going to say I'm going to remo remove this particular option because this is the default option so I'm going to remove this particular option and you can see here the HR department exists is going to be skipped so it clearly says and I did not specify that option when I said that is no table access because that is the default app option so whenever you don't specify this by default Oracle if the same table exists is going to skip that particular table remember that particular thing so this is the concept of table exist action now we can also do a table space level refresh so what is the table space level refresh table space level refresh allows you to copy the data from one table space into another so it allows us to map that again now again i wanted to explain that remap table space if you wanted to do it on a two different databases in a same table space, that's possible. But uh, we all, and while tra transferring, we can actually transfer it to another table space as well. So remap table space allows us to map the objects of one table space to another table space. So what we are going to do now is we are going to actually we <coughs> sorry. Uh, let's see where the okay. So the remap table space, I'll show it to you a little later because I just wanted to follow this. So what I'm going to do is like if you if you wanted to um, if you wanted to do the full export as a normal user, if you wanted to do full export as a normal user, that's also possible. So it is not necessary that you have to use uh, the sysdba or the dba authority. So the but for but for that we need to grant this particular authority to the users so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to uh, i'm going to grant this particular utility on the source so on the source because we are going to export it so i'm going to use this export because the export has to be done so sorry it's not here so this is the source database i'm going to use the i'm going to run the export full database so grant is success succeeded so i'm going to close all of this multiple windows here also i'm going to close all of these multiple windows so that's done now bring it a little bit down and what i'm going to do is for on the source here i'm going to use the hr user to say full is equal to y so using the hr user we are going to transfer the full full so you can see i'm not connecting as a sysdb i'm connecting as a hr user let me clear this and put it here and so I'm sorry And you can see using the normal user, I'm saying full is equal to Y under this particular directory. And when I do this, what is going to happen is like the HR user is going to 
do the entire full database export now you can uh, if, when and when you want to load this particular data onto the so target server you need to make sure that he has the import authority I, I did not execute this i just copied this so here we need to change this to imp full database to hr so this particular user should be able to import the entire database level now before doing that i i we need to do something we need to because we are going to connect using the hr user the hr user i cannot drop so i'm going to drop the shop user because this is a full export so i'm going to run this particular three queries i'm going to drop the shop user so whatever objects are under the shop they will get deleted but hr table i'm not going to drop because that user is what i'm going to use to import the data so i cannot drop that user but what i will do one thing i will drop the tables under that particular user so i'm going to do that so let's run all of this so that's done now what i'm going to do is i'm just for this in this i'm going to show it to you that i don't have hr.employee i don't have hr.department neither i have shop employee and this neither i will have all of this because i just dropped the shop casket so neither i will have this object so i will not have all of these objects but we will not we, because this is a full database export we will not be able to have those uh, tables so now what i'm going to do is if the export is completed i'm going to transfer that export so let's transfer that particular export so this is the full export and let's see if it came here and you can see full db using the normal user has appeared and i'm going to now i'm going to now use the imp dp but this time i'm going to use the hr user so i'm going to use the hr user so let me clear the screen and i'm going to use the hr user to do the full refresh so it's possible that a user without sys dba or dba authority can do the full refresh for that you need to make sure that the user has got the full AXP full database and IMP full database authority. Now, if you wanted to do it on the same database, you'll have to make sure that this particular authority is granted to HR user on the source database as well. So now the right, right now the input is running. So give it a minute. Let's see if the shop user we dropped. You can see shop user we dropped. Let's see if the shop user got created and you can see shop user got created. And now let's see we dropped the hr.employee hr.department and shop. because shop user was dropped shop. inventory was also dropped but let's see if those tables came back so we can see those table came back and the shop table also came back so this is the full database import using the normal user now we are going to understand the concept of pack. okay let's see what is the in the tutorial i don't want to jump here and there so <coughs> we we are going to now we are going to understand the concept of a parameter called content so what <coughs> what content does and i'm sorry about this sorry about my code i got the code so what content tells you is like it allows you to export only the metadata data or all so if there are multiple options by default if you don't specify this it is all but what we are going to do is like let's say there is a requirement that you the users don't want the data they only want the metadata or let's say they don't want to create the objects they only want the data so you have all these options but we are going to just understand the metadata only so what i'm saying here is like for the schema hr whatever tables are there in the schema create those schemas but don't transfer the data so content is equal to metadata means the tables will be created but not the data for that what we need to do is we need to drop the hr schema because i'm going to use the system so let's drop the hr schema or the hr user let's see if the we have hr user and hr user should not be there we have only shop user and which means that we will not have these tables hr.employee or hr.department now what we are going to do is we are going to use the we are going to use the sysdba to actually do do the schema level export so let's do that so so we are going to just export the hr schema dump so we are transfer we are saying that we are going to export this particular schema and what we are going to do is we are going to then we are going to import that particular schema but when we import we are going to say metadata only and even when i export it also i said metadata only so i'm going to say 
import and before doing that i wanted to show you that i don't have this employee table neither i have the department table so i'm going to do this and what is going to do sorry okay so since i actually this is the mistake that i did since i dropped that particular user i should have remembered that i need to give the grant for him other because i'm i'm going to i need he so what why did it oh i did not transfer the file what okay so I should have this is my mistake yeah so th there should be space here yeah so the transfer is done and i'm going to run the same command it's a mistake of transfer so i'm going to run the same command and uh, what okay so you can see here now what will happen is like the objects will get created so you can see the objects so we get an object but there is no data in that object there is no data so when we imported when we imported this we said we said metadata only so we said metadata only so what happened is like it created those tables without the data so it is possible to transfer the objects without the data with only with the data or both and by default all is the default so we understood the concept of contained parameter the the next concept that we would like to understand is the pair file concept. So what is this pair file? So the pair file means till now, whenever we were running the export or import, you can see all of these options I was giving on the command line and the command was becoming very big. The command was becoming very big. So what you can do is instead of putting everything in the command line, you can create a parameter file. And the, that is, there are a lot of the advantages of creating the parameter file because if you want to run the same import or export, you can just reuse that particular parameter file. So there are so many, in, uh, this one. And again, the name of that particular parameter file is of your choice. You can give whatever name you want to give. So here I'm giving, this is the name, this is the name. Anything you can give, you can give your name. And I'm going to, I'm going to put this particular parameters here. And then I'm going to also create a parameter file at the, at the uh, at the target or for the import to happen so i'm going to use the parameter file so let's do that yeah so now that's done so i'm going to save that so let's verify the parameter file uh, here and let's verify the parameter file here so looks like the parameter file is created on both now, what we are saying here is we are saying I want to export only the employee table under this directory with the name of this job name of this. And again, as I mentioned, you could have used the job name clause in all of the previous sessions, previous commands, not necessary that you have to you, only when you are using the pair file, you have to use it. So this is whatever parameters you can specify on the on the command, all of those parameters, you can put it in the file. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this particular parameter file and I'll show you how to use that but let's run this so let's run this sorry not SCP before running the SCP I need to run the XPDP so what I'm saying here is XPDP HR password and I'm going to specify this particular pair file so it's going to read this pair file and it's going to perform the export as per the parameters specified in this pair file so I'm going to run this I'm going to run it here and then it's it started this export job and you can see it will only export a table called employee so you can see it has only exported hr.employee nothing else because we specified the hr.employee now we got we we will have a file called table dump we will transfer that particular table dump to the target so let's do that So that's done. Let's verify that the table dump came, table employee dump that came. So now what we are going to do is we are going to use that particular IMPDP parameter file. So exactly same command, whatever we took here, exactly same command. So I'm going to take this command here and I'm going to say IMPDP and then I'm going to say pair file, the name of the pair file, I'm going to use it here. So what is going to happen? And before doing that, what we need to do is we need to actually drop this employee table because this particular table already exists 
So I'm going to drop that particular table. So drop HR employee and that's done. And I'm going to run the IMP DP. So when I run this IMP DP, sorry, IMP <coughs> DP, what is going to happen is like, okay, so data pump directory invalid. So I did not give the permission. I think I dropped it. So let's do the, this is something that I, this is something that is expected because I'm doing a lot of uh, activity. So you might, you, you might, the HR user, we need to grant him the authority to access the data pump directly. Somewhere I dropped the HR user, so that that authority went off. So let's do that, and then <coughs> let me clear this and let me rerun that particular command. And this time the HR dot employee would have got created. So I just dropped that particular table. You can see that table was dropped. Now let's run the HR dot employee, and we should be able to see HR dot employee. So this was the concept of a pair file. This was the concept of pad file where we can put whatever commands we want to put. And again, I just showed you one example, but whatever commands that we ran in the past, all of those commands can be placed in a pad file and we can run this. And next time, if you, whenever you want to generate uh, the new dump, you just have to change the name, name of the dump file or if you want to override it, remove the existing dump file and create a new dump file. Now, this is the concept of pad file. Now, I, I think I missed one concept, which is the table space level export. So table export, all that stuff is done. So let's understand, <coughs> let's understand the concept of the table space level export. So what we are going to do is under the table space level, where is the table space level? Okay. So what we are going to do, we, 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 all of these objects got created in the users. We are going to migrate the objects of these users to another table space called test. So we are going to migrate the users from to objects from this particular table space. And again, you don't have to do the remap. You can, you could have transferred it in the same table space on the target, but I just wanted to, don't want to waste your time giving you a lot of the examples. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to only export the tables, the objects under the table space called users. And when I export it, I'm going to load it into another table space. And that time we have to use the remap table space clause for doing that. So, but before doing that, we need to create this test table space because that particular table space doesn't exist. So let's do that on the target, not on the source. We don't have to do it because on the target, we are, when we are doing this, we are going to store it in that one. So let's do that. So let's create our table space. And let's drop these tables as well. So I'm going to create table space. That's done. Let me cl clear this. So table space is created. If I rerun it, it will fail because we have already created that. So it's already you say use a different name. So it's already created. I'm going to grant the quota on that particular table space. So the, that's done. So create quota. I'm going to drop all of these three tables. So let's drop all of these tables, drop, drop, drop. Now, if I run the select star on hr.employee, it will not be there. hr.department, it won't be there. Shop.inventory, it won't be there. But before importing, I just wanted to show you something. Let's run this particular query on the source. And what I'm saying here is give me the tables and I'm going to show it to you, this query. So this query, I need to run it on the source. So let me run it on the source and I'm going to show it to you how that query looks like. But let me run that part before and what that particular query does and I'm going to format it for you. So what it says is like, give me the name of the table space owner segment name segment type from DBA segment where the table space name is users and only for this users. So you can see under the table space called users, I got owner shop. He, he's, he has a segment name or table called inventory and under this users I got HR under that I got these two tables so <coughs> sorry this is the two tables under the source database and sorry three tables and under the table space users and if I'm going to run the same similar query here but when I run this particular query I'm going to just change the name of the table space to test I'm go and you can see table space is equal to test and you when I I'm going to format this query once again so exactly the same query, except the fact that here I'm saying, give me the objects from the table space called test. So I'm going to run this here and you can see, I don't have any objects in the table space called test. And all of these objects are in the table space called users on the source 
But when I'm, I'm what I'm going to do now, I'm going to export at the table space level. Let me export the data. And again, I don't have to export it because I've exported a lot of the data. So let me not export one more time. So <coughs> I'm going to use the same import uh, import. So because we have done the full dump, so I'm going to use the full dump. But when I'm using the full dump, I'm going to so let me run this and I'm going to use one of the full dump and I'm going to say table space is equal to users. And where is the remap? I've not done the remap. Let's see. I thought I did the remap. Thing I did not do the remap. So let's do, or maybe I did not copy the full command. So let's clear this. And let's, yeah. So I'm saying table space is equal to users, data pump directory. And here you can see remap table space. Whatever objects are in the table space called users, they will be remapped to test. I'm going to give the password of sysdba and let's wait for this. And here, what will happen? You can see there were no objects under the test table space. Let's run this particular query and all of these objects came. And if I now run, so now they are under the, you can see here under the source, they were under the table space called users. Under the target, they are called under the test. And if I now run this select query, we should be able to get those objects data. So we have, we will have the data, but now these tables are not under the user table space. They are under the test table space. So these are the other, so this was the concept of the table space level refresh. We have seen all of the concepts. So now what we are going to understand is how to monitor the data pump job. The, while the data pump job runs, there are ways you can monitor the data pump job, what progress it has done. So there is two concepts. One is the master table that you can do. And there is a DBA data pump jobs, which will show all the, all the export or import utility data pump utilities that are currently running, stopped, paused, etc., etc. <coughs> so what we'll do is like on the source table, on the source, I'm going to, I'm going to run one, uh, one, uh, I'm going to run one uh, dump. So I'm going to run one export utility so before running that export utility. So let's take this particular query, put it under the source source. And I'm not going to do the import here because it's exactly the same. So you can see the DBA data pump job select star from DBA data pump job. There is no job that is running here. There is no job that is running here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to run the XPDP utility. And then when I'm running that utility, I'm going to go to the SQL developer and run this dump job. And you can see it is currently executing. So there is a job called sys export full zero one. And if I wanted, I can, when I run the uh, export, I could have given the name of this job name and it will choose that particular job name. But by default, it has chosen this. And here, if I run a select star from this, you will be able to find that there is a table called this and it, it contains all of this that what it is currently doing. So you can see all of this information, it will be captured. So it's doing all of this in all of these uh, objects is actually exporting. So this is the table. And now this particular table will be there. This is called a master table with the same name as a job name. And this particular table will only be there until this particular export is running. So until this particular export is running, that particular table will be there. And once that export is completed, automatically that export will go off. Automatically that export will go off. So now it's almost done. So now let's run that DBA data pump jobs. There won't be any job. So you can see here and neither this export master table, you can see table or view. So this particular master table gets created when the job is executing. And once that job is completely successful, it will. And there are other behaviors such as if you wanted to keep it even after the job completed, you can say keep master is equal to yes. If the job terminates, if terminates then it will be retained. So there are if you stop the job, it will be kept. If you kill the job, it will be deleted. So there are the this is how the master table behaves. Now, what I'm going to do one more time, actually, I'm going to remove this. And I wanted to show you some more things. So let I'm going to clear the screen, I'm going to run the XPDP once again. And what I'm going to show you is attach status, continue client, stop job, start job and kill job. So now let me I don't need this. 
this one i'm going to place this in center i'm going to make this a little bit bigger and <coughs> i'm going to show you all of these options so i just need a sql developer so and what i'm going to do is i'm going to run this particular job and uh, while this particular job is running you, if when this particular job is running you can safely exit out of it using control c you can see you, you can't see the log now you can't see the log now but if you run the command called status you can see that it is executing now if you want it to show you if you want to show you what are the what it is currently doing because you can't see and you can keep running status again and again so you can see it I'll exit out of that so let me exit okay i got exited totally so let's that's fine i'm going to reconnect and let's see if it is still executing if it is not yeah it is still executing so what and now i got i i logged off so probably i would have logged off so what i'm going to do now i can actually use an attach option i can use an attach option and i need to know the job name which is actually this so let's do something let's actually try to attach to that particular job so let's run this command and let's say attach is equal to and we need to give the name of that particular job which i'm going to get it from here if it is still executing for some reason it may not so let's say and you can see okay the job has completed already so that's why i was not able to attach it that's okay i'm going to rerun that particular. i'm going to close this i'm going again and again so <coughs> i'm going to remove that particular dump file once again yeah this is the dump file and i'm going to clear the screen i'm going to run the export once again and uh, then i'm going to no no that was not the actually dump that was not the export actually yeah yeah so now it is running and now i'm going to see what is the name of the job so this this job i'm going to exit from here i'm going to say exit then i'm going to clear the job is still running you can see exiting from that does not stop job so you can see it is still running and if i wanted to attach that to that particular job what i can do is i can say xpdp attached to this particular job so this job is this job name i'm going to attach to that particular job give the password and you can see it is executing and if i wanted to see the output you can say continue client and what will happen is like when i run this when i run this it will show me the things that it was showing normally so it is you can see continue client allows me to see and if the job was in the stop state it would have started that so continue client does two actions it displays the log and start the job if idle status if i want to see, see the status now i'm going again i can click it and i can say status now if i wanted to uh let's see if it is still running it's done so let's let's remove the dump file once again because there are so many so some more things that i wanted to show you and let's run the xpdp once again and what i'm what i wanted to show you is if i wanted to now if i wanted to stop the job if i wanted to stop the job then i can do here so status currently if you run the status you can see it is executing from here also you will be able to see that is, is executing here you can see it is executing what i can do is i can say stop job and yes and the job has been stopped now if i click here <coughs> it is not running state is not running but at this particular table will be still be there because that we have just stopped that particular job we have not killed that particular job so now what i'm going to do i'm going to attach to that particular job once again so i'm going to attach it and then i'm going to you can use the continue client or you can use start job so let's say start job and it's going to start that particular job now here if i run this query it is again started executing and if i wanted to kill the job i can say kill job and then what is going to happen the job is going to get terminated and the master table will get deleted so now if i run this the job is gone and if i take a look at the master table it's no longer there so this was the tutorial on the data pump so these are the options there are other options again i have not covered 
let's so let's me let me go back so give it a minute so i've not covered all of the options there are other options as well i tried to cover maximum options that you can there are options such as parallel there are ex options such as include exclude uh, <coughs> there is a parameter for statistics etc there is a parameter for encryption so there are multiple other options that i would like you to explore but this basically we i wanted to explain how to do a database level export schema level export table level export table space level export only the objects without data and uh, data without objects so and the table and when we do that the concept of uh, remap table space the concept of the imp uh, full uh, permission such as exp full database etc the concept of pair file the how to monitor the data pump and the concept of master table uh, <laughs> with this i will stop this particular tutorial thank you for watching i have a bad cough and that's why you will be able to hear me coughing now and then sorry about that and if you have if you like this particular tutorial if you like the videos that i'm uploading do subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial bye bye